This is Intel's brand new NUC 11 Extreme Beast Canyon with a Core i9 CPU and optional dedicated graphics card. It's a beast in a box. But is it also for creators? Let's find out. Intel's NUC series stands for small format yet powerful PCs. The target group is mainly gamers, but the new Beast Canyon series also attracts graphic designers and 3D artists. This is because the top model houses a Core i9-11900KB processor with 8 cores, up to 4 M2 SSDs, a maximum of 64GB RAM and two PCIe 4 slots in just 8 liters of volume. All of that is paired with a lot of connectivity and driven by a 650 watt power supply. And with the PCIe slots comes room for a dedicated graphics card. This is what makes the Beast Canyon lineup so special. You can just throw in any single or dual slot graphics card of your choice and you're good to go for anything CUDA, RTX or TensorCore related. So let's take a look at what the interior of such a small but powerful machine looks like. The M2 SSD for the operating system sits in a slot in the bottom of the case. From there, it interacts with the heart of the Intel NUC, the so-called compute element. This is a highly integrated system that contains the CPU, RAM, Intel UHD onboard graphics, Wi-Fi and all I.O. ports. The top of the case consists of a flip-top cover with three massive integrated coolers. The removable front of the compute element reveals the DDR4 RAM slots and space for three additional M2 SSDs. In terms of connectivity, almost everything is covered. Two Thunderbolt 4 ports, six USB 3 Gen 2 ports and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port are on board. Together with the ports of the optional graphics card, there's a lot to connect here. On the front of the case, two additional USB ports an SD card slot and a headphone jack complete the package. Let's now take a look at the performance. The i9-11900KB CPU is a modification of the 11900K, the flagship of Intel's 11th gen i9 lineup. The KB type is a 65 watt mobile version, permanently soldiered on the circuit board and especially designed for nooks. In Maxon Cinebench release 23, this 8-core 16-thread CPU scores with around 12,000 points in a quick test. While doing Cinebench over 60 minutes, it delivers a stable performance of about 11,200 points and is thus absolutely in the range of full-grown 8-core machines. The noise level is around 50 decibels during CPU rendering, which is an acceptably low range. As for the graphics cards, I tested this machine with two of them powerful HP RTX 2080 Ti and a Quadro RTX 5000, both from my studio's inventory. Let's look at the first GPU. In terms of performance, the HP RTX 2080 Ti looks like a solid complementation for this mini PC. The card completes the Redshift 3D benchmark in 4 minutes 15 seconds. With 11GB VRAM and lots of CUDA and RTX cores, it seems to be a solid workhorse for Redshift for Cinema 4D. The noise level during GPU rendering is around the same as with CPU rendering, roughly 50 decibel. But all of this comes with a grain of salt. During rendering, the first frame of my animation light is just finer, which takes around 12 minutes with this card. The task manager shows a heat level of 80 to 84 degrees Celsius on the GPU. The back of the card around its ports gets extremely hot. This area can hardly be touched with the fingers. So, Let's check out the second candidate for GPU here, the Quadro RTX 5000. This GPU completes the Redshift 3D benchmark in 5 minutes 36 seconds. Compared to the slightly faster 2080 Ti, the Quadro RTX 5000 offers 16 GB of VRAM, so it's a plus of 5 GB. And the Quadro RTX 5000 stays significantly cooler during rendering with Redshift. The area around the ports gets quite hot here as well, but the task manager only shows a maximum of 70 degrees Celsius on the GPU, whereas the 2080 Ti reached a maximum of 84 degrees. 
This difference seems to come from the excellent heat management of Quadro cards, including the card's metal casing, which creates an extra of passive cooling. So, what does this mean? It doesn't necessarily have to be a Quadro, especially considering its price-performance ratio. So, for example, RTX cards from the Founders Edition also offer a metal casing and thus extra passive cooling. But in any case, a graphics card with high manufacturing quality and excellent cooling properties should be chosen for such a compact nuke case. This extra investment will definitely pay off in longer and safer rendering and thus in a longer return of investment. By the way, what is interesting about the integrated Intel onboard graphics is that you can connect the monitor to it separately, while the dedicated graphics card can take care of CUDA, RTX or Tensor tasks, whatever, without being disturbed by boring display tasks. Of course, this machine isn't meant to be a graphics workstation for heavy 3D animation and day-long or week-long rendering. But what I really like about this machine configuration here is the combination of a relatively high CPU clock with up to 4.9 GHz turbo boost, the powerful GPU, the maxed out 64 GB of RAM and the high connectivity. To my mind, all of these features and the small form factor make the Intel NUC 11 X3 Beast Canyon a snappy beast in a box for freelancers in graphic design or motion graphics. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.